You ever have a presenter who likes to play around with their handheld? Top three simple things you can do to be more successful when setting up your wireless systems. Remember to like and subscribe. How's it going? This is Jay with Kinetic and in this video we're going to go over my top three simple things you can do to be successful when setting up a wireless system. Now I'm not going to include wireless workbench on this. I feel like that deserves a video of its own. As far as some other kind of standard practices go, we'll let those be that. In this video I'm going to cover three things. One, there's a plastic retainer that is usually in almost every Sure wireless body pack or handheld. So I'm going to show you to look out for that, how to change it, things like that. Different battery types, how to install those. I know it sounds simple, but you'd be surprised how many times I get something coming over to me which somebody had a rechargeable in and now they want to use a standard alkaline battery. So things to look out there and also to how to set up your pack for alkaline, uh, lithium ion or uh, nickel metal hydride. The last thing is just RF power. Believe it or not, you can actually change the settings on your mic from some, depending on if it's a QLXD, you just get like a low to high setting. If it's a ULXD or an Accent, I can change the actual milliwatt settings from 1, 10 to 20 and why that's important. So again, top three simple things you can do to be more successful when setting up your wireless systems. All right, so the first thing I want to go into is batteries. This is really important and you need to decide, are you using standard, just over-the-counter double A's or a rechargeable? And what I have is a factory rechargeable from Sure. This is a lithium ion rechargeable from Sure that comes in usually an eight bank or single charging station from Sure, such as this one right here. You're gonna get alkaline batteries such as these Duracells right here. Or you may get a nickel metal hydride which I don't have an example of, but I'll show you. Those are just the double A's which can be rechargeable. So first we're gonna check this. The mic might drop out a couple times, but this is important to show you. To unscrew it. And there is a little plastic retainer right here. Now this little plastic double A retainer, it says double A on it, is important if you're using double A batteries. This little retainer snaps. This is essentially closing the gap between the battery holder and the batteries. So that closes the gap between the batteries and the plastic locking mechanism. Now, if you're using a Sure factory rechargeable battery, and I'm gonna have this mic cut out, you need to remove that retainer. Now you can see that the gap in the microphone is now closed. So it's super crucial. I'll get lots of rental microphones all the time that are missing this retainer because whoever used them last used rechargeable batteries and they forgot to put that retainer in. So what ends up happening is you put in AA batteries like, like these right here. And somehow in the middle of either there's a mic runner or maybe you have a static mic on a stick, that's the best case scenario. But worst case scenario, you have a mic runner or maybe there's a really animated presenter. I've had auctioneers that do this. That just do that shit, right? And 100, one, 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 two, and two, and two, and sold. And I had one do the little, his little flip thing and the mic just cut out immediately. Um, I'm not going to throw blame around that was the A2 should have checked it on that one, but ultimately it was my responsibility to double check him. So I hold some of that blame onto myself. Well, I wouldn't be much of a gentleman if I showed you a problem and didn't give you a solution. So let me give you a solution right here. I have a handheld, no retainer, a couple double A's in there, right? Maybe I just got this on a rental kit. I'm like, man, like, what am I going to do? I can't 
send this out with faith. Well, good old gaff tape. And this is actually real gaff too. I'm not gonna use the cheaper stuff for this. So take some three inch gaff or whatever gaff you have. And we are just going to make a buffer. So I take it and just roll it on itself. Any of the old schoolers out there, they'll, they'll know the wonderful uh, benefits of the gaff tape, right? So I take it, fold it in half, and now I have some sort of buffer that I can. Now you're gonna have to gauge this out. Maybe yours will be too, too thick or too thin or whatever, because we don't want to break the locking mechanism if it's too thick, right? So I'll put that in there. And that looks a little thick. So let me try it again in the mo movie magic. I'll uh, speed this up. As you can see, I have my gaff tape buffer in there. Now, there we go. And ta-da. Pretty solid. So as you can see with body packs, it works exactly the same as handhelds. With here, we have double A's in there and there is a little piece of plastic right here, which is meant to secure double A batteries. Now, if I want to use a sure rechargeable battery, I need to remove this once again. And this isn't as easy to get out, but pops right out. And now I can remove the AA batteries and put a sure rechargeable in. Boom. Ta-da. Always check for those retainers. And, and if you take them out in order to use rechargeable batteries, put them back, put them in a bag, keep them somewhere. Now, now that you've chosen which battery you want to use, you need to select the settings on the mic that are appropriate to that battery, and I'll show you that next. All right, so most packs will give you the option of three different flavors of battery, and I'm going to try and show you here, even though the contrast of the screen will be kind of off. I'm going to go to utility, battery, and now I have the choice of set AA type. Now we get alkaline. Alkaline is just kind of your standard batteries, non-rechargeable. Then we get uh, nickel metal hydride, and that is usually if you buy like double A's that are rechargeable, you could set it to that, like if they're just regular double A's, but they're the rechargeable ones. And then the last one is lithium, and lithium is going to be what this guy is right here. So make sure that you set your pack setting to lithium, uh, nickel metal hydride, or alkaline, just based on the battery type. The settings you get and the way it's going to read, it could be a full battery and then all of a sudden it just reads, you know, dead, zero, you have nothing, and that's because your battery setting is set to the wrong type. The last thing is just RF power. Believe it or not, you can actually change the settings on your mic from some, depending on if it's a QLXD, you just get like a low to high setting. If it's a ULXD or an Accent, I can change the actual milliwatt settings from 1, 10 to 20, and why that's important. You should always check these before deploying. Again, enter, and this time I'm gonna click on radio. I'm gonna cycle down where it says RF 10 milliwatt. By default, it's set to 10 milliwatt. 10 milliwatt is a good place for most things but sometimes you may see it set to one milliwatt. Maybe it was put into a breakout room or a small room for recording where they didn't want much bleed and somebody set it to one milliwatt. I promise you, if you leave it on one milliwatt, you send it out onto a stage and there's a good amount of distance between the receiver and the transmitter, this will fail. So make sure you're set to the minimum of 10. If you're really just trying to be a badass, you can set it to 20 and just pretty much burn that away. Now the sacrifice you get at 20 milliwatts, obviously range is gonna be a factor, you're gonna gain some there, but battery life is going to be chopped in half. So be conscious of that. For most things, I set it to 10 milliwatt, then I'll kinda of see where I land. If I set it to 10 milliwatt, 
I walk it up to the stage, I look at the receiver, everything is full, I have no warnings on there, then I'm gonna be happy with that. But it is good to check. I have had microphones go out again at one milliwatt and obviously they started chopping out. I would get RF drops, just wasn't a professional setting for what I needed it to be. Remember to like and subscribe.